Forza Horizon 5 is not a perfect game, and I've made many videos covering why that's the case. In fact, I've made so many of these videos that people are starting to think that I'm a Forza hater. Yep, well to all the Forza fanboys who think that's the case, here's a video of me saying nice things about the game. So 4,000 likes is the target, so give it a little tickle. Tickle me, I tell you. Tickle me! And uh, yeah man, without further ado, let's get to this video. A new addition in Forza Horizon 5 is of course the addition of launch control which I absolutely love. For example I can stop my car around here and then rev the car like this which is amazing look at that here it's a red line but if I hold the handbrake and hold the accelerator it goes into first gear and initiates launch control and if I let go Yep, that my friends was a perfect launch. Now I kind of feel like it should be the other way around, like launch control should require you to have to press the brakes instead of the handbrake, like do you get what I mean? Like that's what launch control feels like. Now I don't really mind because launch control is a really cool feature and I'm so glad that we have it in this game. And it's not just all wheel drive cars that this works really well with, because even with super fast cars like this, super fast... Uh, okay, it didn't really work that well there. But you know, it did minimise a bit of wheel spin because if I were to launch my car like you do in old Forza games, look at this. Yeah! So it's safe to say that launch control really does save the day. I've always mentioned how the photo mode in Forza Horizon 5 desperately needs an update with the time of day adjustment mode because the current photo mode in the game felt really really outdated. Well believe it or not in Horizon 5 we got a brand new photo mode through an update and I love it! It's honestly so brilliant, it's an absolute game changer and I love the fact that they updated it because back in the day yeah if I wanted to take a thumbnail picture yeah then I had to wait for perfect lighting like this. So if it was night time then I would have to wait like 10 or 15 minutes for it to be daytime again so I could take a thumbnail picture. And that got really really long and annoying, but nowadays if it's night time then you can adjust the photo mode time of day and voila it's daytime just like that. But if it's daytime and you want it to be night time then all you do is go to effects, go down and then change the time of day to night time or late afternoon and then sunset and then evening and then night and then look at this, it's night time and it completely changes the whole vibe of the game. Not only that but you can also adjust the weather as well, for example if I go to photo mode then look at that it's clear, now it's clear post rain, now it's cloudy, now it's cloudy post rain, now it's overcast, and now it's light precipitation, now it's heavy precipitation, now it's scale, what is scale, I don't know. And if I were to stop my car around here, then I can actually bring my character outside of the car and make him go around the car and do different emotes like this, amazing, look at that. In fact, I made a whole skit in Forza Horizon 5 using this photo mode update and yeah, it was so creative, I loved it. Okay, now I do feel like the Crew 2 and the Crew Motorfest have a far superior photo mode system, but honestly I love this system in Horizon 5 because it's way better than the old Forza games. Now there have been many many moments where AI driver tires really annoy me like they crash into me for no reason and I'm like what are you doing? But there is something I really love about some of the AI driver tires in this game as well because if I approach a slow driving one like what's in the distance, yep that is a C5 Corvette I believe but yeah man if I approach him and follow him really slowly then look what happens. Yep, he dropped the gear and he's disappearing. And now it feels like I've made a friend and I'm following him and he's like, hey, try and get away from me. And I'm like, no, I'm in a C63. And he's like, what? I'm in a C5. I'm awful so much in my videos. But yeah, it's, it's basically like the Forza Horizon 3's offline convoy system back in Horizon 5. And if you know me, then you know that I love that feature in Forza Horizon 3. The offline convoy system was amazing for people who didn't want to go online. And just like that, it feels like I'm driving online in Forza Horizon 5 right now when I'm actually offline and I'm cruising with an AI offline driver tire and it's amazing. Honestly, I love features like this because it doesn't force you to go online to actually have fun. You can just mess around with offline driver tires and I love it. And now let's do it with the C8 Corvette. Let's follow him really slowly and then look what happens. Yep, he's disappearing as well. I love that feature. Honestly, man, I really wish that the offline convoy system from Horizon 3 could return, but honestly, this is basically like that. So, yeah. 
Basics in Forza Horizon 5 are not realistic because, well, it's an arcade racing game, but it is really inviting for literally anybody to play, whether they be an arcade racing game player, a hardcore sim racing player, or someone who's just new to racing games. As you know, the cars seem to have a real sense of weight to them, and they're pretty easy to drift as well. I mean, I'm just gonna show you me drifting with one hand, I can do it way better with two hands, obviously, but I'm holding my phone with my other hand, and just look at how easy it is to drift. Honestly, this is the only racing game which is easy to play on a gamepad, a keyboard, and a wheel at the same time. Okay, now sure the physics and the wheel support are no way near as realistic as Gran Turismo 7 because they absolutely nailed the physics in that game, but for an arcade racer game, I genuinely do think that Forza does it the best. Now hands down, the best thing about Forza Horizon 5 has to be the event lab creation mode. As it's a whole new side of Forza Horizon 5 which many people don't actually know exists or don't know the extent of how good it's become. Because I remember when Forza Horizon 5 came out, I tried the event lab creation thing and it felt really unfinished. Like there weren't many props, the tracks always ended up being really bumpy and it was so full of flaws and so many problems. But two years later, you could really tell that the developers went ham on this event lab creation mode and they absolutely smashed it. I mean you can now join pieces together, there are Hot Wheels pieces and oh my days the amount of props is crazy. And we also have this place which looks very weird and desolate and there's a reason why that's the case because you can actually build stuff here. Yep the developers actually gave us 2 kilometers by 2 kilometers of open space for us to create our own event lab creations and it is amazing. And believe it or not I've actually created one myself. Yep here's one I made earlier made using community made props and I absolutely love this. For example I made this sort of weird ice drag strip. And yeah, but this will make drag racing so funny because it's so slippery driving here on the ice. And if I go through the tunnel, then you will actually see a little neighborhood that I made with a helicopter on the roof of that house. Yeah, these are all community made props and it is so creative. I mean, this was made using shipping containers, as you can see. And it genuinely looks like a proper house. And just look at it, it actually feels like it's part of the main map of the game. Honestly, man, the event lab creation in this game is amazing. Forza Horizon 5 is an arcade game as you may know, but the engine swaps have always remained realistic so they can actually fit the car. Which is weird for an arcade racing game, but in Forza Horizon 5 they were like, nah man, we're an arcade racing game. We're gonna act like an arcade racing game and we're gonna give you arcade racing game engine swaps so now we can do some crazy engine swaps. For example, this is the Wuling Hongguang Mini EV Macron, yep they named it after the French Prime Minister, and it sounds like a washing machine and it goes like one as well because this produces 27 brake horsepower. But if you want to max out this car, how much power do you reckon this would make? 100 brake horsepower? 200 brake horsepower? 300? Nah, because if you want to max out this car... Yep, it produces 1147 brake horsepower, which is almost 43 times more than what this car power may be. I cannot drive this car, but yes, yeah, nearly 43 times more power than what it produces standard. They basically squared the power of the car and then added 418 extra brake horsepower. That's literally what they did. Oh my god! Anyways, this is not the only car with crazy engine swaps. The uh, Nissan Suru also comes with crazy amount of engine swaps. All of them are very unrealistic as well, which I absolutely love. Like, we need unrealistic engine swaps in the game. And damn, I love the fact that Playgo games are actually embracing this. Like, we want to create crazy cars like this. So yeah, large up playground games because the engine swaps in this game are amazing and I love them very, very much. Oh my days, I'm grifting this. Okay, now this may be a very, very Marmite opinion, but I actually really like the paid car packs in Horizon 5. Because it kind of reminds me of the good old Horizon 2 and Horizon 3 days. Because I remember with those paid car packs, the cars you could get were super interesting cars. I remember I never really bought those car packs because I couldn't afford it back in the day and I was really broke and I was a child. But I really love those car packs because I love the cars in them and Horizon 5 is no exception. As the cars you can get in Horizon 5 with the car packs are seriously cool. I mean, this is a car pack car, along with the Ascensor SCV-12, the Fast and Furious cars, and so many amazing cars. Like they 
Chinese cars. Oh my days, I love the Chinese cars in this game, even though I've literally never heard of them. Honestly, I just have one little gripe with the car packs in this game, and it's the fact that you can't get them for free if you have the car pass or the ultimate version of the game, but I'm pretty sure you could in Horizon 2 and Horizon 3, so I really wish that there could be a car pass which extends the car pack so you can get them for free, or at least there should be another car pass where you can buy it and you can get all of the car packs for free, because that would be amazing. Now something I really have to applaud Forza on is their post-launch support because it has been brilliant. I mean every month they've been constantly at it with updates and new cars and new updates and new fixes and new updates and you know they've been adding to the game every month and each, each, I cannot speak, each update has been amazing. I mean yes the festival playlist does recycle a lot of cars which I absolutely loathe, I hate this, but occasionally you do get some brand new to Forza cars which is brilliant and they don't charge us for it so we basically get new cars for free unlike uh, <laughs> yeah yeah that's a tenner for a car and as i mentioned earlier the event life creation has gone through a major overhaul and it's such a good feature of the game and yeah man despite the state of forza Horizon 5 and the many flaws that i've pointed out it's the only mainstream racing game to actually stay relevant need for speed and the crew are very on and off like they'll occasionally get a few cool updates and then after that it's, it just goes back to irrelevancy again but one thing forza does well is manage to stay relevant it's such a relevant game despite being two nearly three years old and can i sure this could be because of the name because forza is forza and it's like the go-to racing game for non-car guys but you also got to praise the developers because the post-launch support has been pretty good